So, yeah, uh, I'm in a new location. Um, sorry about the background. It's the best I can do in less than 30 seconds. Um, uh, I'd rather not explain why I'm in a new location. I don't think any of you guys even give a fuck about my personal life or me as... Anyway, um, let's actually, you know, just cut the intro crap and just go straight to the, the actual topic of this video straight away, which is... Oh fuck. Didn't pick a topic. Hold on, be right back. Alright, crossovers it is then. Uh, there were other things people suggested, but they were a bit too, uh, taboo for what I want to do at the moment, so, alright, crossovers it is then. Okay, I don't feel like I need to explain what a crossover is, but, you know, I'm going to explain it anyway. Uh, basically a crossover is basically when two or more franchises come together into one, like, event story or whatever the fuck. Like, for example, Superman meets Spider-Man, or Fallout meets The Sims, I don't know, something like that. So yeah, naturally enough, DeviantArt has its own little subsection of crossover art where they take more than one existing franchise and combine them into one image, and, uh, so, yeah, not surprisingly, some of these crossovers are quite strange, weird, whatever, you know, what to expect from this wonderful website at this point. So, uh, enough of me just blabbing on about this shit. Let's actually, you know, get into the good stuff, shall we? So, here we have uh, Boo from the Super Mario Brothers series and Maps to Blook from Undertale. You know, um, it's just a hunch, but maybe, you know, because of the title and all, they're ghosts and. Oh, fuck it. Shitty non-jokes aside, this is actually, well, I'm pretty sure most people will say this is not that bad at all. In fact, it's pretty good. The one thing I'd like to bring up here, however, is that if you look at the outlines here, you can kind of see that there's gaps or disconnects in the outlines. I'm fairly certain most people watching this is familiar with this. They've seen this before in, like, animation or something along those lines. Uh, I myself personally have seen this before whenever I saw someone else working on a bit of art in real life. Uh, whenever they were doing the line art for their piece, uh, they kind of used this method. At first, I kind of thought of, oh, this is kind of a method of, if you can't get a particular, like, huge stroke in the line art, you kind of just do this whole disconnect thing as a stylistic choice, I guess. Now, I, I could see many people making the argument that this is quite a lazy way to do line art, because, you know, yeah, I, I would suppose this is a lot easier than just doing, you know, proper traditional line art. Yeah, I guess that there are people out there that use this method as a cop-out or whatever. But I think this is one of those instances where it actually works. I think it actually bodes really well, the watercolor-esque shading here. And yeah, I've looked at this person's uh, other works, and uh, not all of their stuff is in this style. Some of them are, but most of them aren't. Also, uh, I did a little digging around with this artist as well. They have a YouTube channel where they do speed paints, so I'll leave a link for that if you guys want to check this person out or, and their DeviantArt and all that stuff. <laughs> There's actually some pretty good stuff down there. You know, I think it's almost tradition at this point to have at least one picture that's off topic. So uh, I'll get it uh, out of the way early in this video. Uh, so this is obviously ripped straight from the scene from the Spongebob movie where... Yeah, yeah, that, that scene. Only this time, uh... The flag that's being held up by Patrick's ass cheeks says Fuk Anime. And by the looks of things, the car from uh, Knight Rider is about to go up his ass here. Uh, I guess it's a crossover between SpongeBob and Knight Rider. I don't fucking know. I never seen Knight Rider. And the only reason why I even know it's the car from Knight Rider is because it has Knight Rider in the tags. So, yeah. Also, judging by the description here, uh, the intention of this picture was to piss off kids. Uh, as of this recording, there is only four views, and I'm currently the only favorite of this, so, uh, I guess you didn't really achieve your goal of pissing off kids. Mm. Sorry about that, man. Uh, I guess better luck next time. Oh, well, 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 actually, think of it this way. Um, you did not achieve your goal of pissing off kids, but you at least mildly amused me. I mean, I at least chuckled when I first saw this. I mean, I thought it was funny enough to add it to my favorites, and post in you know, Discord server. I mean, it wasn't your intention, but hey, you at least provoked some level of emotion out of someone. 
I mean, many people say if any type of media provokes any kind of emotion, that's usually a sign that it's good. Uh, would that really apply here? Oh shit! Uh, apparently, I wasn't the only one that watched this show. I mean, it was more or less just a typical cat and mouse silent slapstick show, and it probably wasn't even that good to begin with. And all I remember from it was that it had a somewhat catchy theme song. I guess more of surprising that uh, I guess it's kind of an obscure show, and I find fan art of it that's this good. Usually with obscure shit, it's hard to find really good fan art of. I don't necessarily know what the lizard guy is. Uh, it's apparently it's a crossover with whatever that lizard guy is from. Uh, I know what the little bug guys are. They're, they're cockroaches. You know, I think, oh, again, the cockroaches might be one of these shows that I have fond memories of. But if I go back and rewatch it now, I probably wouldn't like it very much. So you know what? I'm probably not going to go back and watch it. And I never noticed this until I put this into the editing software, but if you, I'm pretty sure most of you have noticed, if you look at the cockroaches here, they're walking off the page by the looks of it, and you can see the lizard, his tail's going off the page as well. So like, is this like a little fourth wall break? I mean, the description doesn't mention anything about it, so I'm not really sure. If anything, it reminds me of that uh, one Undertale drawing I looked at that kind of broke the fourth wall. But yeah, this is a really, really cool effect, actually. Honestly, I kind of wish I would see more drawings that use this, actually. Fuck, this actually gives me a few ideas. You know, I'm not, I'm not gonna say them, because I don't want people to steal them, but you know. Yeah. Okay, I guess this kinda makes sense, because Rick is basically Doc. I mean, that's what he was to begin with. He was literally Doc at one point. Marty, Marty, just relax a little bit. I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know. What did you think he was gonna happen, Marty? What are you, crazy, Marty? What did you think was gonna happen, Marty? It's real, Marty. It's real, it's real. It's real, Marty. It's not just the Scud is real, oh, Marty. It's real. Scud is it's real. real. I tried to find the lick my balls one, but I don't know. It doesn't seem to be on YouTube anymore, or I didn't look hard enough. And uh, I'll be honest, I'd rather not search for it for obvious reasons. I've seen it once, uh, I'd rather not see it again. But then again, I also watched the jelly bean thing, like, several times. Uh, Royland, you're, you're, you're a funny man. Also, but the pick itself, I think it's a bit weird seeing Rick without his rigid pupils. You know how the characters of Rick and Marty have, like, blobbish, puffy pupils. Am I the only one that was never bothered by that? Because nearly every time someone brings up the show, they always say something like, Oh, the pupil thing kind of annoyed me, or the drool on Rick kind of annoyed me at first, and then you got... None of those actually even bothered me at all. And that, children, is why Rick and Morty's art style works so well. It's unique, but not overly unique to the point where it's nothing we haven't seen before and it's still recognizable, while at the same time we can still easily identify it as Rick and Morty and not mistaken it for something else. I just fucking realized I spent more time talking about the show than the actual drawing itself. Uh, I mean, the only issue I'm having here with it is that in some places the line art is a bit messy, but, you know, I'm pretty sure you don't need me to tell you that, artist, if you're watching this. I mean... You can't really be told to get better. Like, line art is just one of those things that you just practice at to get better. One thing I really fucking love here is the color palette, though. It really gives off this 1800s vibe, and yeah, th that's what the artist was going for, and they pulled it off tremendously. So yeah, good job. Didn't feel like I needed to breathe in so obnoxiously for that. So here we have a timeline for Rockstar games, which separate the Grand Theft Auto, Bully, and Manhunt games. And yeah, in case you don't know, uh, Manhunt, well, the first game anyway, takes place in the same universe as Grand Theft Auto. I don't, I'm not sure about two. Uh, it's debatable whether or not Bully is in the same universe. I mean, there's been hints here and there, but unlike Manhunt 1, it's never been outright stated that it's canon. And, uh, maybe it's just me. I know Rockstar themselves said the whole 3D, HD universe bullshit and all, but you know what? My own little headcanon, I know headcanons were kind of stupid, but, you know, I, I, I like, I like to imagine that, uh, you know, everything that happened in the previous Grand Theft Auto was at least, you know, had some point to them. I don't know, it kind of feels like, you know, if I ever replay the Grand Theft Auto games from start to finish, I want to at least feel like, oh, if I'm going to go from San Andreas to 4, I at least feel like, you know, all the previous games mattered, at least. Like, w would it not be cool to have uh, Franklin and CJ in the same universe? Come on. But Rockstar themselves is, I know, I know, just let me have my fun, come on. So right now we're going to meet, uh, Tracer. 
the hedgehog. I mean, uh, I'm not gonna say whether or not this is Gmod or not, because I'm assuming this is whatever fucking program people use to, like, take game models and do them like this, because I've done, like, several fucking pictures of this, like, something like this, and it's some other program that I don't fucking know the name of. Can someone please just tell me so I just don't have to keep having this discussion every time I say something like this? <laughs> right. Uh, this is... Tracer the Hedgehog, this is, uh, like, I guess this is what Tracer would look like if she was a Sonic character, and, uh, I suppose she's kind of like Sonic, she's always energetic, uh, she's always in your face, she's cocky. Uh, um, yeah, uh, what's making me feel a bit, uh, weird here is that, uh, Tracer clearly seems to be flirting with Sonic here, and, uh, you know, if this came out before a certain thing, uh, maybe, but this, 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 this came out after that, and, uh, either the person doesn't give a shit, which, I guess, fine, you can, whatever fanfiction, whatever the fuck, I don't care, or, you know, they missed it, and I was thinking, like, how the fuck could you miss that, that was all over, like, social media and all that shit whenever that first came out, I mean, maybe... Uh, Tracer is a bisexual, maybe? I don't fucking know. Or maybe she's just into furries, I don't fucking know. Or maybe this is just like a different character altogether and they're just based off of Tracer and not just Tracer in hedgehog form. I mean, as for Tracer, the hedgehog herself, I kind of find it weird how her torso seems to be a lot uh, bigger than her pelvis and leg area. I mean, I'm pretty sure the actual Tracer isn't like that. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure there was a whole fucking blabble about Tracer's backside or something. Alright, I'll be completely fair here. The whole design idea behind this Tracer and Hedgehog form isn't necessarily god-awful. I mean, I'm fairly certain if someone out there were to actually, you know, take this and, you know, modify the design here and there and, uh, you know, just, just draw it. Like, make it look really nice. I think something really nice can be made from that. I mean, the one thing I'm thinking of right now to compare this thought to would be that one Judy Hopps Tracer crossover drawing I looked at in the Overwatch video. Something along those lines. I'll tell you what, if someone out there who's actually a decent artist sees this and decides to do it and uh, send it to me, uh, I'll put it in the next video at the start somewhere. I, 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 I'll promise you that. I mean, uh, another thing is that I don't understand why uh, Blaze and... Uh, what's her name? Rouge? would be pissed at this. I mean, I understand why Amy would be pissed about the whole situation because, you know, she's like a hyper annoying fangirl that just wants Sonic to hump her to death. I guess Shadow is just reacting as anyone else would probably react to this. But, but you know, you know Shadow, he, he's edgy, so anything he does is just, you know, fuck him. Shadow's a piece of shit. No one likes Shadow. Speaking of edgy... I recognize the wee girl over here, the one with, that's crying blood. I seen her on like the cover of a game or something. It was on Steam. Oh, fuck, hold on, let me, let me just look on Steam real quickly. Oh, just, just by fucking luck, it just happened to have a, a sale here. It was on like the front page or something, so I didn't have to search it up or anything. Fran Bo? I'm pretty sure the, the title makes sense if I actually played it. Uh, it looks to be some sort of point and click adventure game. I've never actually played a point and click adventure game like pr a proper one before you know I, I like the art style of this game I know absolutely fuck all but, but you know what I'm just gonna add it to my Steam wish list real quickly and maybe certain summer seal rolls around or something like that and, and the, the actual drawing itself uh, I know what some people are gonna say ooh hoo hoo edgy ooh hoo there's blood and uh, there's a there's a, like a dark tone to this and ooh hoo reaper uh, Columbine school shooting, angsty teenagers, goths are edgy, they're stupid, death metal crap, shit. Uh, fuck up. Can, can, can we not just like dark stuff or anything like, well, no, before you ask, no, I'm not some goth guy that goes to Hot Topic. We don't even have Hot Topic where I live and I don't even wear dark clothes for the most part. I'm not wearing any fucking clothes. Like, I'm just saying not to just pass off anything that has, like, a dark tone or a gothic tone or anything like that as edgy and therefore it's no good or anything. 
I mean, calling it edgy would imply that it's trying to be shocking in some way, because that's pretty much what edgy means. It's being used in a sarcastic tone. Although, according to some people, uh, that's not what it means. Edgy just means uh, goth, teens, dark stuff. Because, ah. yeah, uh, edgy actually is a good thing when used, like, unironically. It means you're pushing the envelope and being shocking in, in a good way. And uh, the other definition for it is uh, someone who's nervous. I'm pretty sure anyone's talked about that. I mean, sure, if something's just trying to be shocking for the sake of being shocking and there's nothing else to it, then yeah, you can, you know, that's fine. But like to pass off anything like this as edgy and just completely write it off because of that, that's I think that's a bit shallow-minded. I mean, like at this particular, I don't even feel like it's just, I don't feel like it's trying to be shocking. I mean, it's just a nice little drawing that has like a dark, tone to it it's obviously well one of the games anyway obviously has like a somewhat of a dark gothic tone to it i probably should not use the word gothic i don't know that that's what i would use to describe it something like this there's a different term for it then all right i mean i guess like shocking stuff for the sake of being shocking is kind of annoying and i think it annoys some people a little too much or i don't know is edgy just a meme word like a other certain word at this point Okay, uh, too long, don't listen, even though you've already listened, uh, don't write off anything with a dark tone just because you, I don't know, it's cool to do that now, uh, unless it's just, you know, pure edge for the sake of edge, then I guess, yeah, and, uh, this drawing isn't that, it's just, you know, cool little fan art of a game, or two games that have similar tones to this drawing, so... Yeah, like to be fair, if this was like overly happy, which I, Fran Bo doesn't seem to be that type of game. I mean, I suppose it could work as like a parody fan art, but obviously this person was trying to capture the tone of the game. And this is coming from someone who's only looked at the screenshots of it on Steam, and I only know what genre of game it is. Fuck, I really want to play this game though. I don't have the money for it though. Well, I do, but I'm a cheap bastard. <laughs> Good job in the drawing, by the way. Alright, suppose that ends the first of the new and improved best and worst of DeviantArt. Uh, whole new location, whole new background, whole new topics, and best of all, whole new me! Better than ever. Because I've, I've never, I've never been better. So, yeah. Uh, just, just end the video. <laughs>